It's 2013. Our guest here today wins the 113 pound state championship. If you would, introduce yourself. Uh, Nathan Boston, Russell for Woodford County. And before we get to this, you're coming in from another state as a state champion, correct? Yep, so I was in Indiana uh, for my freshman, uh, freshman and sophomore years. Uh, and then before that point, I was wrestling in Indiana all through, but I was born in Kentucky. So I, I claim to be uh, homegrown. Yeah, good, That's, uh, we love to hear that. And you were saying your dad wrestled at Woodford County for, the, for Coach Carr and for uh, rest, or, um, Coach Parks? Yep, so uh, my dad, he was a Woodford County guy. Uh, he grew up in uh, Versailles area. Um, and then, so, so even when I was in Indiana, I was still coming back and I was doing uh, private lessons and stuff like that with Coach Carr. Yeah. I was still coming back to the Woodford County camps uh, and stuff like that. I was working out with Nate. and uh, So I did get to take advantage of, of working out with those guys a lot, even when I was in Indiana. I got you, I got you. Now, you said your dad wrestled, but like what got you into wrestling? Just dad talking about it or just, I mean, just what got you into wrestling? Uh, so I actually didn't want to wrestle. I wanted to box um, and my dad, he boxed as well. Coach Carr actually mm -hmm. was uh, coaching my dad with boxing. And um, my brother was like, oh, I'm going to wrestle because Chad Red, um, Chad Red Jr.'s mm -hmm. uh, dad actually put flyers out for Red Cobra Wrestling. My brother picked one up. My dad said, you can wrestle. And then uh, I had to be his dummy, and I got really bored of being his dummy. So I was like, all right, screw this. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to wrestle with him. And uh, it was something that was kind of natural. I picked it up pretty quick. Hey, you're about the 15th person that said big brother yeah. or somebody else was, you know, practice dummy or whatever. And he's like, no more of this. I'm sick of it. So it's pretty cool that, you know, it's not just in your household, everybody's household. When, when the big brother or somebody comes home from wrestling, you're going, if you're a sibling, you're going to get wrestled. Sure. That's just the way it is. But it's, uh, so you picked it up. And about what grade did you start? Do you? So I was um, in eighth grade, uh, or sorry, eighth grade. I was about eight years old, okay. was, and yeah, wish I was eighth grade. That'd have been a, a quick pickup. But no, absolutely. I was I was eight uh, I was eight years old. Uh, I want to say second going into third grade. Okay, yeah, and that is in Indiana, correct? Uh, in Indiana. Okay, yeah. all right. Now we've had a uh, West Virginia state champion, uh, Nick Giampaolo. A couple other people have said that they moved in. They didn't necessarily place in the state, but you know, for work or whatever reason, parents had to move. How does Kentucky wrestling compared to Indiana wrestling? Um, so one thing that, I, that stands out with Kentucky and Indiana wrestling um, against a lot of other states is the, the one class system. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at Ohio, you have three classes. Fantastic state, but you have three classes. Uh, you have PA, awesome state, one of the best, probably the best, and they have three classes. But with Kentucky and Indiana, you both have one class, which is nice. Right. I think the biggest difference you're going to get between Indiana and Kentucky is uh, the level of depth. I think that um, my 13 and 14 year, if you took the state champs at every single weight uh, from Kentucky, we could hold our own against uh, the best guys from uh, Indiana. But I think as soon as you start getting to that uh, third and fourth place guys, or there's third and fourth place guys, I think it would get ugly quick. So I think that's I, the biggest difference is just level of depth, uh, which also comes into play when Indiana has three in a wrestling schools and Kentucky yeah. has maybe 80 or 90 or whatever it may be. I think I could be. I, I think we ended up this year with like 112 total okay. total schools yep. from, um, I think there was four or five schools over the 2021-2022 season picked up wrestling. So awesome. we're about there, you know, 112, 100 some. And there's supposed to be some more coming on, but I totally get the 300 plus schools. Statistically uh, speaking, it, yeah. more schools is going to be a uh, better opportunity to get and better guys. I so. said this earlier today uh, on a video that a lot of people from different states that I've never met have reached out whether it's Facebook comments or Facebook messaging, I'm sorry, YouTube comments, is we didn't realize Kentucky had such good wrestling. We didn't realize, you know, people like uh, Isaac, Isaac Knable, he was being brought up several times. Uh, George King's video, even though George was an animal, you know, he, that's a good representation of what Kentucky has to offer. So it's good for, for this, for the world to see Kentucky wrestling because this is a... It's starting to come back around, but for a long time, boxing was dead. Boxing was, I mean, MMA took over, boxing was dead, and the reason why that was is so many of the best fighters were always behind, you know, an 89, 95 pay-per-view charge. You never got to see them, like, uh, on HBO when Mike Tyson used to fight on HBO and all this. They were always hid, and people's not going to shell out 1900 bucks every time you turn around for a box and that's why boxing popularity started to decline and MMA started to rise is because what they were hid with Kentucky wrestling if you're not in the arena 
chances are you're just not going to get to see yeah. people like you, people like um, Isaac, your George Kings, your Livingstons, all these names from the past because there's just no you know, medium for people to watch. Now with this channel and getting to do these interviews and having the footage, it's such a, a great blessing for the sport of wrestling in general in Kentucky. Hey, we've got some good wrestlers here. Sure. We have some really good wrestlers. So you win the Indiana State Championship at 106 pounds, right? 103 pounds. 103 time. pounds. Yeah, was okay. Switch over. I got you. Okay. I remember that was what had to be 10, 10, 2010. So 2010, 2011. Okay. It went from three, uh, it was 103, and then the next year went to 106, then, which I was more than happy with. I I completely <laughs> understand. And then of course you come to Woodford your junior and senior year. Yeah. The Kind of just real quick, walk us through how is Indiana's uh, postseason? Do they do like regions like we do, sectionals? How does that work? So um, I want to say Indiana's um, postseason is a lot more cutthroat than Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, so the one thing that uh, I think stands out with uh, Indiana is um, our semi state. So mm -hmm. we have. Um, sectionals, regionals, a semi-state, then state. Mm -hmm. um, and if you make it a semi-state, which is a, a, a big accomplishment, I don't say I would compare uh, Indiana semi, like a tough Indiana semi-state to about Kentucky State Tournament. It would be a fair comparison. Because um, gotcha. a lot of times you do have like the powerhouse schools. Like you mm -hmm. have, uh, for me, we had Perry Meridian and Lawrence North, which were the top two teams in the state. Uh, my sophomore year, wrestling mm -hmm. um, in the uh, same semi-state. but. Uh, for that example, if you don't, if you lose one of your first two matches, you don't make it a state. So oh, wow. you, if you lose your, uh, you win your first match and you lose your second match, uh, it doesn't matter if you number one, number two guy in the state, you don't make it. And and that's one thing that mm. uh, you see a lot of the best guys were able to, were getting knocked out really early. They get caught in their back or something mm. would happen, and then uh, as soon as you make it to the state tournament, it's the same thing. There's there's no wrestlebacks. Oh wow. And um, you have Friday night, uh, and on Friday night, uh, you go out there, and if uh, it doesn't matter who you are or who you're wrestling. Um, if you lose your first match of the Indiana State Tournament, you're out. If you win your first match, you play. So it's super cutthroat as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Uh, it makes it uh, really exciting because a lot of times the first couple rounds of, of the Kentucky State Tournament can be kind of boring because you see a bunch of 10-second pins across the yeah. board. But in Indiana, every single person's fighting for their life because it's like you're either going to be a state placer here or you're not going to be a placer at all. And it's My just, goodness. It's, it's such a, a big medium between the two. Which, wow. Yeah, so that's, I didn't know that. Thanks for sharing that. I did, I did not know it's, that. It's, yeah, it's a huge difference between the two. So you move into Kentucky, and you are nationally ranked. Yep. What was your national ranking coming in? Uh, so my uh, freshman year, I was ranked first in the country, um, first and second. Me and Tommy Thorne were, were back and forth my sophomore now, year. Tommy – Tommy Thorne from uh, Minnesota. Explain who he is now. Uh, so Tommy Thorne, wrestled for Minnesota, a couple time All American. Uh, he was uh, fantastic. He has a couple uh, brothers that are also very good. Uh, but yeah, he went to wrestle. He was top four, top five guy uh, throughout his entire career uh, for Division One at Minnesota. Uh, stud. Go. Me and him grew up together, uh, wrestling a lot. Um, awesome dude. And um, but yeah, so me and him were back and forth my freshman year at 103. My sophomore year, um, I was ranked first in the country. Um, all through that year and in the state finals my sophomore year actually lost to Stefan Michich who was ranked second uh, in the country so um, that one set me back uh, um, just that that one loss and it was weird because me being number one in the country him being number two in the country you'd think a loss like that would just essentially flip you back to number two but uh, I don't know if it's because I moved to Kentucky or what Kentucky guys seem to not get a ton of love on the rankings but they yes. dropped me down to like number 11 which was like I don't know how you get beat by the number two guy and drop to 11, uh, which was really odd. But I, I started that next uh, season at uh, number 11. And the one uh, downfall to Kentucky is you just don't get to see a ton of, unless you are able to leave, a ton of ranked guys. So it's really hard to climb back up um, in the rankings if you take that kind of fall. So you kind of have to go to those out-of-season uh, national tournaments and stuff like that. But going yeah. into my uh, junior year, I was ranked 11th. And of course, we'll get to your 2014. We'll save that for another for the next video, yeah. but you're at Woodford County, Yellow Jackets, the dying of the hair. Was that something that you was just like, I've got to do where the team was doing it and you were just like, I've got to, um, I've got to fit in, man. I got to do it. Peer pressure, right? So yeah, it, we'll get to the 14 season and kind of, and then go over that a little bit uh, in a second. I'll kind of explain what we're going to, you're probably going to get to at one point. I'm guessing that's why yeah. you're, you're leading to this, yeah. but um, it, it was, yeah, it, I think that uh, 
I got conned into it. That's all I'm going to say. That's I don't fine. know. There's no, that's fine. I, I, like, I was like, didn't want to do it. And then I was like, you know what? I'll do it. But actually, it's funny because um, before I did it, for some reason, I got talked into shaving my head first. <laughs> so I had like a, a nice comb over, like clean cut. And all of a sudden, I, I had my head shaved and yep. it was blonde. So and that, that's, you know, Woodford County's known state over for when a state tournament, regional time, regional tournament, let me say that again, comes around. Woodford County's going to have the, you know, the bleach blonde. Uh, you can spot them coming a mile away. Yeah. Use you guys as uh, markers on a uh, airport runway. Just stick you <laughs> outside. Sure. You can see what's going on. But let's kind of go over your bracket real quick here. Of course, 113 pounds. And you start off the day. I just had you, and I lost you. Here we go. You start off against Dez Tinsley from Iroquois, and you win that by fall in 23 seconds. So talking about a quick pin right across the board. This right here, just what I'm looking at, you've got, a, there's a pin in, in going in a, a minute eight, 23 seconds, minute 37, a minute 53, 255. I mean, you've got just all these really quick pins right out of the gate. So I can see what you're talking about, Indiana is being a lot more cutthroat. You get to the next realm, you're wrestling Michael Beats from St. Xavier. You win that by fall in a minute 46 seconds. So that was, you know, pretty, um, Two matches, two pretty quick pins. You get to the quarters. You're wrestling Brady Emerson from Oldham County. And of course you win that by fall in a minute, or I'm sorry, four minutes and 30 seconds. Now you are wrestling uh, Chris Biller. I believe that is from, is that Montgomery County? He's from Mead County. Mead County, yeah, Mead I'm County. sorry, Mead County. And you win that by fall in five minutes and 56 seconds. So I'm right there. At the so that one was actually a, a funny match to talk about. So All right, let's hear it. Um, that match, he was pinned in probably like, I would say a minute into the match, like flat as could be. And at the 556 mark, he actually wasn't even close to pinned. Like wasn't, I, it was, I got off the mat and was laughing with the ref because I think it was a makeup call because mm. it was like, wasn't even close. Like he was like 90 degrees and he just like called the pin which I was cool with because at that yep. point I was like, hey, man, I'm still in the running for, like, pinning all the way through. Right. But, yeah, he wasn't even close to pin at 5.56, but he was, like, flat as could be in about a minute. Mm. So I like to see the video yeah, on that it, one. It was, like, I like, he called the pin. I like, thought it was, like, tech or something. Or I didn't know what was going on. And I, like, looked at him, and he was like, yeah, it was a fall. And I was like, I, I don't think it was, but I'll take it. I'll, so. I'll take it, Mr. Official. <laughs> uh, then, of course, in the finals, you're wrestling John Hernandez from Henry Clay. He's Awesome, all, dude. He's also a, uh, you're a, you're a junior, he's a junior as well. Had you wrestled John before? So actually like half that, well, two or three guys in that bracket, we actually trained together on a regular basis. So me and John were actually really good friends, still really good friends to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, we trained together a lot. Um, we'd actually go up in, uh, co uh, to Coach Carr and, and train up there. Uh, and then he'd come over to ETC and uh, when we went up to Louisville and he trained us there. So me mm -hmm. and him really close. He would, uh, we would train together all the time. And actually uh, Emerson, Brady Emerson, yep. Train together all the time together, um, so that bracket, it, 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 we all knew each other really well, um, the, the top guys, and um, so we we all got to wrestle pretty consistently. Now and that's Max's brother, right? That's Max's brother. That's so they're I both at Oldham coaching, yeah. So yep. they're they're twin brothers. And, okay. Uh, yeah. I did not know that. You, you would never know by looking at them. Yeah, they're, I was they're, say, twi they're twin brothers. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Now, have you seen? Uh, of course, we sent you the footage before, yep. but before that, had you seen your video? Uh, this so year. so I hadn't seen this one until you sent it to me. I actually hadn't seen uh, either of them until you mm -hmm. sent it to me. But watching this match, I mostly because me and John are such good friends. Like I, I kind of like we in a way knew an out the outcome of the match is because obviously when you wrestle somebody every single day, like the chance of it drastically changing right. is not very high. But um, watching this match, I had didn't, didn't remember what happened. I don't remember any <laughs> second of this match. But then when I watched my 14 match, I was like, dude, I can remember every single thing I was thinking throughout that match. And, and this one, I don't have no clue, because I think I was just, I was wrestling with a friend. So right. it, it was a little bit different in this match versus my 14. I had, I've never met the kid before. I never wrestled the kid before yeah. in, in my 14, so. So you kind of more zoned in on. A little more zoned in on the other match, because I was like, I don't know, this kid might be able to throw. This right. might, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. John, I was like, if we get in a throwing position, it'll be fun. Somebody's going to send it. So it, it was, uh, yeah. That's, it's cool, you know, and that's not just with wrestling, but like, you know, like um, football, Team Kentucky, basketball, baseball, travel, soccer, all these, you know, kids now 
are you know able to like you were talking about earlier go to out of state competition yeah. and you got kids playing on the same summer league travel team and then they get you know into like a high school competition and they like want to kill each other yeah you you couldn't catch a fly ball you know whatever and it's cool though that you know you guys can travel and go to places and do things with um, with each other in that setting and then I guess compete against each other because I mean I'm sure at some point when I wrestled back in the late 90s early 2000s there was travel teams you could probably go to out of state but it was you know social media wasn't even an existing yeah, thing a lot easier so to find stuff a lot, a lot easier to get out and do meets and stuff so it's just it's cool you know to get out and get that competition but enough of us rambling we're gonna put this on watch it and see how quick they think can get this pin you guys are seeing what we're seeing we're at the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington well, the Alltech Arena, to be more specific. And, like, you've got Joe Catan as you're on the whistle and Garrett Pickle. So you got two really good referees. I love the, the – I think all schools should have a white final singlet. I mean, they are so sharp. It's just so meaningful. You know it's a big, you know, a big time. Like, wow, you know, this is the – finals. And I understand not every team, not every school can afford to have different type of singles, but man, when you're in the finals, somebody's got like a really sharp white single, a really clean look. Mm -hmm. It just like, wow, man, this is awesome. So we're going to put this on. Let's do it. So right out of the gate, what are we looking to do here? Um, so the fact that me and him had wrestled so much, um, I knew I could get away with a lot more than uh, right. I probably mentally should have been. Like usually I, I would set my shots a lot more, but we trained mm -hmm. together so much. Um, I knew that if I, I dove in and just got to a leg, I was going to get to the get to a finish. Right. Um, it was just a matter of time. He was really good at, at, at uh, making things take longer than they typically would have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he was able to stay in real good position. That was one of the things he did really well. And um, uh, for me, it was always get a takedown quick, if I can't get a turn right away, cut him. Um, so right yep. there, if I if I got the turn, I felt he was fighting. That meant he wasn't broke yet. So I'm going to keep pushing the pace here. And one right. thing that I give John and his brother David uh, credit for is they were going to fight until they were dead. So uh, it's, it's something that'll take you a long way, uh, no matter oh, what yeah. level you're in. If, like you can know how to wrestle, but if you aren't willing to fight every single second, you're not going to get too far. Now he's got Andy. And uh, Headley in his corner. Who's in your corner? Do you remember? Uh, I'm probably Coach Carr, maybe both cars, maybe Rusty. Mm -hmm. um, they switched up a lot. So as yeah. far as that, and and with that year, we had so many guys. I think we had One, three or four guys in two, the finals. That three, four. So you got your tail or like a little chip. Yeah, so that's the here. one thing. When you wrestle guys like Hernandez, you fight really hard. Sometimes you got to go for tilt stuff mm -hmm. more than you can just trying to be tough and man him over. So that was one thing. And in this match, I was like, I got to put some points up because uh, I just didn't want to waste a lot of time trying to just force stuff over and the match ended up being a four to one first period. Right. So um, that was one thing, find a way to score. And if you wrestle somebody tough, yeah. like right there, yeah. like he's so tough, there's no way I was going to get that over. I, I, I might as well go back to tilt at that point. So mm -hmm. that was something I, I always kept in my mind. Yeah, I definitely have Coach Carr. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I, I hear Carr. I, I, I was definitely like a I hear, old, old man. We call a JoJo JoJo, and I call yeah. a Coach Carr old man Carr. Old but, man uh, Carr. Definitely old man Carr there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess that's the end of the period you chose down, or yeah. did he defer? Or I'm take, guessing take? I chose down. I, that was one thing. I, um, I'm not, I wasn't big on deferring. and um, I have the mindset of can, if – you're in a lead, keep scoring, and if, if it's tied up, score first. So what's the point in picking anything but bottom? Right. Uh, and I was, I would consider myself hands down the best in the country on bottom. I, I just didn't think anyone's ever going to ride me, and uh, I never really got rode. I mean, if you look at my national level matches, most people would just pick neutral when I pick bottom because I would a lot of times I'd get to a situation like this with Petersons, mm -hmm. and, which obviously we went to Granby camps, yeah, uh, with, being at uh, Woodford County, and uh, worked out with Carl Perry a ton. So I, I lived on that kind of stuff. Back to the center. At this point, it was one of those situations where I thought I could put more points up quicker with takedowns than I could with, with just trying to force turns. So right. uh, I, I was doing the, the one, two in one game. There it is. Nice. It's like a side Russian leg sweep. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so it's Old Man Carr and I just heard JoJo. Yeah. 
JoJo's very uh, uh, technical as far as his speaking is concerned, and Coach Carr makes sure that you can hear him. So it's a good, it's a good mixture <laughs> yeah, it's, it's to have a, in the it's corner. It's a really good yeah, uh, a one-two good, punch there. Exactly. You have technical from JoJo, and, and Coach Carr makes sure you heard whatever JoJo said. <laughs> So that was one thing I did a lot um, is that overtime throw by there, and it's mm -hmm. it, it's the reason I did that is because shots are easy, but sometimes you wrestle certain guys and hold on and slow there it down. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, fall! Come on, Joe. Joe wanted to make sure it was a fall there. Yeah, he had to be sure. <laughs> he had to be really sure. There it is. And you take with a, a with a bow you with know? a bow with a bow it's pretty uh, at any point did you feel like you were in danger it wasn't going the way you like no and, and the one thing um, that um, that with this match in practice uh, John would be more aggressive obviously in a situation like that I get it slow it down right. and I, I was really uh, the one thing I was really scared of was him because he's, he's very, very strong with him trying to go upper body and, and maybe catch me and something. That was really all I worried about my entire uh, high school career was wrestling a guy that maybe had been really strong and, and was able to just catch me off guard because I, yeah. I was just slacking. And of all people, I was worried about John doing it because he wrestled so much. I was, knew I was naturally going to be comfortable because he wrestled so much. Yeah. And But that was one thing I was just surprised that he didn't really go for there is, is going for a throw. Mm -hmm. But he's just such a technical wrestler. It's like I can see both sides of the, the coin. Yeah. No, I, I, totally, I totally get it. And... You know, you wrestled so much, been so much national. Like you, pretty much know when somebody's going for something. Like you know what setups feel like. You know, okay, this guy he keeps digging this under. He keeps doing this. You know, pretty much what you can feel it. Yeah, what's, what's going to be coming? Exactly. You you can feel it, um, unless it's just like from left field. But at that point, I feel like my positioning is good enough to where. If, it's left field. I'm probably in a better position than they are, and I'm able to stop it. But right. uh, sometimes with strength. Now that's you never Emerson, know. right? That right there is Emerson. Yeah, he's, a, he's a, a lot smaller there. Than I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, that's, that's yeah, I that think that works. actually in our match, he actually ended up. Um, he hurt a sh uh, elbow or shoulder pretty bad mm -hmm. um, uh, in our match. He got in a weird situation with like a chicken wing or something, and, and um, but yeah, actually this year somebody um, offered me money to throw a match. My goodness. And the amount of money it was just like laughable. Like I was I got it could have been a joke, but like the person that said it, I was like, I don't know if, I don't know you enough to know if that's a joke or not, but uh My goodness. Yeah. So it it was pretty funny. You got uh, Chris McCoy. Awesome dude. Do you still have your medal? I have no clue where any of my stuff is. I don't know where any of my, my, my rings are anymore and I had a yeah. Actually I know where one ring is. I know where my first day title ring is. Uh, I actually I uh, gave it to my little brother. It's my brother Gabriel. He has that. I think he wears it on a necklace still. Oh, really? So, yeah. That's Which, awesome. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And there it is, man. 113 pounds, 2013. Now, of course, you're a two-timer in Kentucky. We're going to, of course, put on the next video, your 2014 video, and do it. But did anything, uh, watching it again, did anything jog or? Um, not really. Um, for this, this term was just weird for me because it was my first in Kentucky. Um, mm -hmm. It's in this um, instance, I actually I could practice with those guys, but for some reason I never really hit those guys in tournaments, which is weird. Um, and I, I believe, don't hold me to this, but I had Hernandez in the finals here, and me, Hernandez, and uh, Luke Rierick were actually all in the same region together. I and believe Rierick that. beat Hernandez, so I had Rierick in the finals at our region so mm -hmm. it was just like seeing how that all unfolded and yeah and, I, and it was that, odd I, I'm pretty sure that's that's correct because I think that old region seven had uh, all the Lexington schools mm -hmm. uh, like Henry um, Henry Clay w uh, Woodford, Woodford County, all those uh, uh, Lafayette I believe is in there you know, so I, I'm pretty sure that's uh, now you know everything's been redone yep. a couple of times since then but I, I'm pretty sure that was uh, accurate but that's all we got for 2013 we're going to of course do 2014 it's uh, pretty cool we'll get there's a lot of things we'll talk about in there so be sure to check it out but that's all we got from 2013 we'll see you guys in 2014